What's going on everybody and welcome to a tutorial with Python and Dash. If you don't know what Dash is, basically the idea is it's both to help you with data visualization but also embedding that in some sort of web-based UI. Now, of course, I, I guess I should really say browser-based UI. You don't actually have to be connected to the web. And because of that, I really do think that's probably going to be the future. So as opposed to doing something that graphs and like, like with Matplotlib and Tkinter, there's really no reason like every machine has a browser. So, so why we need that to be a standalone application, I don't really think that's going to be the case or needs to be the case. Um, so anyways, it's really browser based. And the idea is um, that you know, not only do you need to create a graph oftentimes, but you also need to embed that graph into some sort of user interface. And oftentimes that user interface is going to be a completely different framework from what you're using right now. And, you know, making the two interact together can sometimes be quite the challenge and take quite a bit of time and require a lot of code. So what Dash is aiming to do is to help you not only make your graphs, but also make the UI surrounding that graph much, much easier. So what Dash does is it incorporates um, HTML with React, JavaScript, and um, and then obviously the Plotly graph. So Plotly is who's behind Dash. So um, I actually just kind of stumbled on Dash. I hadn't really heard much about Dash until I was trying to, I was looking into something with Bokeh and then I saw people comparing Dash to Bokeh and people were just saying, yeah, Dash is pretty cool. And so I just looked into Dash because I hadn't, I had even found like a PyCon talk, somebody that was covering like all the visualization libraries um, and Dash wasn't talked about. I mean, Plotly was talked about, but I feel like it's a little unfair not to mention uh, Dash in that. Uh, because this is really cool. So what I have here, um, I've been revisiting a, a project of mine, putting a computer in a car. Um, you don't really need to know anything about any of this stuff. It's just just look at it for the UI sake. Um, but the idea here is that we're graphing various things that are being read by a sensor. Um, and what's cool about Dash and really all this stuff is like is you know you could start with this and first of all yeah the graphs are live and yeah we could hover the graphs but we can also we can change things dynamically and just it's just updated live for us thanks to react and dash for combining those for us so for example if i remove one of these charts the other one it just gets boom updated and it fits to screen actually in that case i'm using some css that i pretty much wrote myself but um or not wrote myself but had to bring in um, but again it was super simple um but actually even that css though i'm actually writing that in python which is cool um but anyways yeah we can go to even down to one or if we wanted we can continue to add more graphs like for example and we can grab that, that one if i continue adding them obviously we'd run out of space but i could scroll down and see the one i just added so anyways, that's one one quick example of something that you can make uh, with Dash. And uh, now let me show you one more example. So here's another application I have uh, built with Dash. It's a little simpler, um, but same kind of idea. So in this case, what we can do is we're going to input a symbol that represents a graph or a stock ticker. And then it just automatically is going to pull and graph that information for us. So as I keep changing it, we get... A different ticker and so on and now we've got Apple here but um, again the idea is that just by typing into here and using react but I don't know I've never coded any react in my life uh, <laughs> this works uh, and it's it's just super cool super easy um, and I'm really excited to have found this and I hope you guys are going to enjoy it as well and with that uh, let's go ahead and get into the series all right, so to get pip, what you're gonna, or get pip, <laughs> to get dash, what you're gonna wanna do is pip install it. So first we're gonna do pip install, and we're just gonna grab quite a few things here. We're gonna get dash, we're gonna get dash dash render er, dash dash HTML dash components. And then you would also want uh, dash core components. Um, so you're gonna wanna get all this. Uh, also, let's get plotly. And uh, just for the record, just in case I forget to mention this anytime later on, uh, you know, the UI aspect of Dash is actually pretty quick and easy to, to pick up. Uh, what might be a little less easy to pick up is all of the Plotly stuff. Uh, so Plotly, as you, you might know, is a, a maturing framework for doing JavaScript-based data visualizations. And basically anything you can do in Plotly, you can do in Dash. So if you want to do like custom graphs and stuff like that, 
um, I would highly suggest you check out like you know just Google what you're trying to do and chances are probably someone has already done it and then embedding it into Dash is pretty simple but I will show an example of us doing that exact thing just doing a simple plotly graph versus Dash and all that so anyways um, make sure you get all this you will need to run as admin or if you're on Linux uh, you know use a sudo if you hit an issue on Windows with not having um, the, the proper compiler or whatever, uh, check out the text-based version of this tutorial. I put some examples there as, as far as what you can do to fix that. I think it was, at least for me, I hit it with markup safe. Um, but you can either remedy uh, the compiler itself or you can get the unofficial binary um, Anyway, that's in the text-based version. Head to the head to pythonprogram.net. Either search for Dash or check the link in the description. There's probably a link to this tutorial in the description. So once you have everything, you are ready to rumble. So let's go ahead and import Dash. We're going to import Dash underscore core underscore components, and then we're also going to import Dash underscore HTML components. So the core components are going to be things like graphs and stuff like that, and HTML components are going to be things like tags, um, like div tags, that sort of thing. So to start an, uh, an application, we're just going to say app equals dash dot dash. And I will also mention that uh, dash is built as a, it's a Flask app. So you can combine this with Flask, either making your Flask app starting from uh, dash, and then you could add... Um, uh, shoot, uh, URL, URL paths. I'm trying to think of the proper term here. Uh, anyway, you can you could do that with the wrappers, you know, or you can actually embed a Dash application within your Flask application. Again, we we might cover that a little, way later on down the road, um, but because for the most part, my use of Dash is for standalone applications, not really to embed. Uh, but I might cover it down the road anyways, but even if I don't, uh, this has been covered. It, there are, is documentation for doing it, so just keep that in mind. So then what we're going to do is specify app.layout, and this is going to be something you're always going to have. This is going to be the HTML of your entire project. So we're going to have HTML.div, so this just starts a div tag. And then let's just say dash tutorials for now. So um, this is just is whatever goes within that div tag. So we're just going to throw in some text there. And then now we're going to run the application. So I'm going to say if underscore, or I guess I should say if dunder name equals dunder main, uh, we're going to do app.run underscore server. And then we will set debug equals to true, even though it's never been useful for me, um, at least on my Windows machine. Uh, now, I'm probably going to have an issue doing this, still running that other, uh, let me run this real quick, let's just see if this works, but, uh, you should see, oh, HTML, what do we do, oh, uh, so dash core components, we'll import that as DCC, and then the HTML components will import as HTML, try again, cool, so, um, now I had that other app running. Let's just see if I can refresh. I probably can't. Yeah, so it's still, so this is something you're going to hit, at least if you're on Windows. I haven't tried developing with this on Linux, so I don't know if it's, it's hard, but it's actually pretty hard to stop this server from, from running. Uh, let me pause just for one moment while I bring up uh, Task Manager. So as truly lame as this is, uh, once you have started this server, it does become quite challenging to get it to stop. So the best way I have found is one, whoops, one is to c close all the running servers. Uh, and then what you're going to want to do is uh, come over here and stop the running Python task, which is going to close what you were working on. Uh, and then make sure you've got obviously your apps and then you've got your background processes. You'll want to check the background processes too because one's going to sneak right in there. Uh, now what you're going to want to do is come back over here and then we'll just restart this one. And there we have dash tutorials. Now um, I know some people are going to be like, oh god that's horrible. Um, that is pretty annoying, but I will say the only time you're going to have to deal with that is when you start a new script. So, um, so you'll see here, this is running with stat. Uh, so what we're going to do is what we can say is like dash tutorials. Oh, you can't even see it. Hold on. 
<laughs> I'm off the screen. I'm off the screen. We'll do that again. Dash tutorials. Zuh, 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 zuh. There we go. So as you can see right here, it just says dash tutorials. But when we save this, let me pull up restarting with stat as well. When we save this, you'll see it says restarting with stat. And now we can actually just refresh this page and you'll see it's been changed. So as long as you're working within the same script, it's not going to be a problem. It's only when you um, you go from running one server, because this basically runs a local server on your machine. So it's only from when you go from running one server to another server that you start to start to have issues. <laughs> so so just keep that in mind um, that if you are hitting, first of all, don't close this, uh, but if you are hitting uh, issues, uh, just, just go into Task Manager, kill the task. If you're on uh, Linux, uh, you can also just kill a task with like top or H top or something like that. Um, there's also like task kill or, or something like that. I think task kills actually windows. Anyway, you can look it up, figure out how to can't, you know, just close all Python tasks. Although I'm not sure you should do that on Linux. Anyways, I would do it probably via top, but anyways, uh, let's continue. So we've got dash tutorials. So, so this is a really simple app layout. Now let's talk about the, a more realistic way that you're probably going to go about doing this. So you've got HTML div, which it contains everything. Now, when you just have some text that's going in the HTML div, that's one thing, but chances are you're gonna have IDs, you're gonna have styles, you're gonna have classes, stuff like that. So it's gonna get really challenging to figure out what the heck is which uh, if you don't label this. So uh, the, the actual contents are gonna be referred to as children. And children can either be uh, a single element like that, or we can actually make it a list. So I'm gonna make it a list. So one of the children will be dash tutorials. The other thing that we can do is we can we can apply a tag to the children. So for example, we could say HTML dot H1. So this will apply a header one tag to dash tutorials. So again, if, if we save this and we come here, refresh, now you can see, okay, header one, awesome, fancy. So now, um, while it's fun to, to do HTML stuff. We really came here for the graphs, so, so let's do a graph. So uh, this is one of the children. Now let's add another child. And just like with HTML, um, you know, you can write it sloppily or you can try to style it. Now obviously it's gonna be a little challenging to style HTML from within Python, um, but we'll do our best. So at the start of the list, I'm actually just gonna hit enter and then I'm gonna hit enter for the end of the list. And then now to add each additional element here, I'm just going to do a comma and then go. So now let's add uh, a graph. So graphs are gonna come from the DCC, so the dash core components. So I'm gonna say dcc.graph. And really that's all you would have to do to, to add a graph. You just throw in that component. Now you need, you probably should add some information uh, to that graph. So, so let's do that now. So let's just say this graph has an ID of example. And then what we're going to say is uh, we're going to give it some information. So we're going to say the figure itself. And very quickly, this is what's becoming your typical plotly graph. So within your figure, you're going to have um, a data element. Let's just do this. So data. And then your data whoops, is going to consist of um, either a single dictionary or a list of dictionaries. So if you had just like a single dictionary, that would be like a single line or a single set of bars. Um, but what we're going to do is a list. So we're going to have, uh, let's do some lines and some bars. So for our data, what we're going to say is first, we're going to have, uh, you know, you're gonna have some X's and then you're going to have uh, some Y's. And then uh, we'll have a type. Oops, don't do that. Uh, we'll try to keep it all single quotes. Type. Uh, we'll make that a line. And then we'll give it a name as uh, boats. So now let's give it uh, some values here. So let's say X is one, two, three, four, and five. And then Y can be, I mean, this can really be anything you want. <laughs> anything you want. Uh, now what we're going to do is it looks like I came off the screen a little bit. I'm pretty sure you guys know it's set over there, but, uh, let me make this a little, tiny bit smaller just so you guys can for sure see everything. There we go. Okay. So, uh, there we have some data, but let's add one more bit of data. And in fact, let's just keep with the styling here.
Okay. Uh, and then let's make this a little different. I'm just going to re-enter some, some random data here. Cool. Uh, and then rather than a line here, let's make this a bar. Uh, and then rather than boats, let's make this cars. So that's our data. Uh, so then besides data, we can have other uh, elements. Let's call this one like layout. Uh, and then layout, for example, we can add all kinds of stuff. For now, let me just do, uh, we'll just add a title, title. And then we'll call this basic dash example. Okay, uh, barring some sort of syntax error, which we'll find out in a second. Okay, so we didn't have any syntax error. So that's another example if you error out. Uh, You'll, you'll probably have to close all your Python stuff when you could go to restart. So try not to write errors because it's annoying. Uh, now we'll just refresh. All right, and now we have a basic uh, graph here uh, made with dash. Now, of course, most of this is not really UI based. This is just, uh, it's mostly just a graph that we've stuffed into our app layout. And really the graph is pretty much a plotly graph that you might see. But uh, nonetheless, we've, we've actually done it. We've made the graph and all that. So now what we want to do is continue working on um, the actual user interface aspect and the interactability that Dash gives us with, with React and JavaScript and all that. So um, that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is uh, getting more into depth with uh, the actual UI aspect of things because... Um, uh, you know, really, once you once you've figured this out, how to make this graph, uh, honestly, you can make pretty much all the graphs in all of Plotly. <laughs> so, so I really don't see much point in spending too much time going over those. But getting through the actual dash and making of a UI and stuff like that, that's where it's a little more complex. But anyways, uh, we will graph a few more different types of graphs and, and get live graphs and all that in the coming tutorials. That said, if you have questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. If you didn't know, we do have a uh, Discord server now, so if you want to come and chat with us, you've got questions that you want to answer in real time, uh, come join us on the Discord app. I will put a link in the description for the invite there to our channel. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.